Hey everyone, and welcome. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at how we can texture an object inside of Blender. Okay, so let's just say you've created um, a 3D model and you want to apply a texture to it. So how do we do that? Well, let's just say already you have your texture and you want to apply it. Now, included in the course files, I have two textures right here that we can use. Okay, one of them is a uh, metal texture like so and the other is a rock texture like this one um, and these are sourced um, from a website called ambient CG okay this is a public domain website where you can have a look at um, hundreds of different uh, physically based rendered uh, textures with all the different maps that you may need okay so if you're looking for a great place for free textures um, ambient CG it's public domain it's totally free to use okay and that is where these two textures are sourced from so how do we get an image like this, for example, and apply it to a model here in Blender? Well, what we need to do is, let's just say, for example, um, we're just going to apply it to our default cube. So I'm just going to start off by deleting everything here, adding that cube back in so we don't have the light or the camera in our way. I'm going to select the cube, and then over inside of the properties window here, I'm going to go down to this little button, which looks like a red sphere. Okay, and this is our material window. Now, what we want to do is click on the new button right here, and this is going to create ourselves a brand new material. All right, and a material um, is basically what uh, determines how an object is rendered, okay? What sort of shading is being applied? So that can involve, for example, um, the texture, that is the base color, how shiny it is, how rough it is, how metallic it is, um, and all sorts of other things that Blender, um, of course, provides, but game engines might not. Uh, so we're not going to be looking at that in too much detail, but what you can do is you can double click on the material here to give it a name I'm just going to call this base material and Down here you'll see there are a bunch of different sliders and um, Options that we can change But what we want to do is go over to the base color now if I click on this here I can of course change this color to whatever I want uh, But you won't notice that the cube is doing anything right now. It is still as default gray cube so how do we actually see these changes uh, of the material? Well, in order to get that, we want to go to the top right corner here where there are four different buttons. And these buttons right here are basically um, different ways of viewing our scene. So right now we are on viewport shading, which basically means that there is a universal gray shading applied to everything. But what we want to do is go over here to the material preview, which is right next to it. You want to click on that, and just, as you can see, our cube is now blue, and we can go ahead, change the color to whatever we want. Uh, I'm going to reset this back to white, so I'm just going to set all the values back to one here. Just so when we apply our material, there won't be any tint um, applied to it. We can change all sorts of things, such as how metallic it is. Uh, we can change the specular, so how large or how small the specular highlight is. Uh, the roughness, so if it's really reflective or if it's um, not very reflective. Uh, but how do we apply a texture to this? Well. If you scroll through here, you'll notice that there's no, you know, there's no button that says apply texture or there's no field for us to drag and drop a texture in. What we need to do is go over to base color right here. And what you'll see is there is this yellow dot. Now in Blender, whenever you see a yellow dot like this, uh, it basically means that we can plug in something. Okay, everything here has a dot, for example. You have a yellow dot, you have a blue dot, you have a gray dot. Uh, blue dots are vectors, okay, so they are basically uh, multiple values. For example, a location is a vector, a rotation is a vector. Um, and a gray dot basically means a value, okay, so a number, for example. Um, the metallic, that is a number that can range between 0 and 1, so that is a gray dot. Whereas something like a mission or base color, that allows us to plug in an image, it allows us to plug in a texture. So what I'm going to do is up at base color here, I'm going to click on this yellow dot and you'll see this window pops up and this basically allows us to choose which sort of texture we want to apply. Now we're going to go pretty simple here, we're just going to go over to image texture, select that one and you'll see right now it is pretty much black because we have no texture applied. But what we can do then is click on the open button which has now appeared and we want to basically select our texture. So I'm going to navigate over to the folder where the texture is located. Here it is right here, we got the rock color. I'm going to select it, click open image, and as you can see that rock is now applied to the cube. Okay, so we now have this texture 
applied to our cube. And if we were to export it, add it to our game engine, um, as long as you export it as an FBX, the texture should come along um, automatically with it. So that should be no problem right there. So yeah, that is how we can apply a texture to an object here inside of Blender. Um, but you will notice that, you know, the proportions might be off. For example, you might want this part of the rock over here. Um, you might want this face to be a different part of the rock texture. And that is where the um, system of UV mapping comes into play. Now, UV mapping is what we're going to be uh, looking at um, in future lessons, and basically that allows us to determine which part of the texture gets rendered on which part of the 3D model. So, adding a texture like this is fairly straightforward, yet when it comes to UV mapping, that's where we will be spending most of our time, as there are many different methods of how we can go about doing it, um, because different objects require different um, forms of UV mapping, but we'll be going over a wide range of those. So, thanks for watching. And I'll see you all then in the next lesson.